Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. Today we're going to be talking about setting up a light burn for your CO2 laser over Ethernet. And I really want to talk about setting it up over Ethernet because a lot of problems that people are having with their engravings and their jobs not running properly is because they're using the USB connection. So you can use a USB connection to connect to the laser if you want to, but uh, Ethernet is the most stable way to connect where you won't drop any packets, you won't ruin any jobs, and it's just a stable connection. So why not use it? It's the way you're supposed to connect. So uh, today's video is going to be all about that, how to set up Lightburn for the first time with a CO2 laser, as well as setting up your Ruida controller. Let's go. I got a new computer for the office, and I have to set up all of my lasers again on here. So uh, I'm not going to use Lightburn's configuration files. I'm going to do this manually so that I can show you how it's done. And a lot of people have trouble with lasers, uh, setting them up. So I'm going to go to the laser tab right here. I'm going to click on devices. And you'll see that I've already got two of them installed here. I can't click find my laser because I'm installing the CO2 and this is for a USB. So it's going to scan the USB ports. We're connecting by Ethernet. So what I have to do is come here and create a manual connection. So I'm going to click on create manual and I'm going to look for my controller. My controller happens to be a Ruida. So I'm going to click next. I want to connect by Ethernet. I'm going to click next again. Now it's going to ask me for the IP address. I've already plugged in the Ethernet cable. But what I have to do now is I have to find out what the IP address is of that Ethernet adapter. So I'm going to click on the start button down here in Windows and I'm just going to type CMD and that's a command prompt. Now once I've done that you'll see that um, in my computer now and what I need to type is uh, the IP configuration list. So I'm going to type in here IP config space slash all and it's going to tell me everything that's connected on my computer. Now I don't want Wi-Fi, I don't want Bluetooth, so I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to look for Ethernet and here it is right here, Ethernet adapter and that's where I'm plugged into, the Ethernet adapter. And over here I'm looking for the IP address. This is the IP address of this particular Ethernet adapter. Now we're going to use that number almost exactly. In fact, let's get this out of the way and let's click in here and start typing 169.254 I have to remember now .83.155 now that is the exact address of the Ethernet adapter but that's not what we want we want it to be just one digit off so let's backspace out the 5 and make it a 6 instead now we have one space different than the Ethernet, Ethernet adapter and this IP address will be free. So I'm going to click next. It's going to ask me what I would like to call it. So I'm going to call this Monport 80 watt. And then it's asking me what is the size of the laser. Well I know that mine is 36 by 24 so I'll put in 36 by 24 inches. And I will click next and it wants to know what the origin is or what the home position is. On my laser it's the right rear. On some others it could be the rear left. I'm going to hit next and this is going to give me a summary and I'm going to say finish because that's all right and you can see we now have the Montport 80 watt. Okay so we are at the Ruida controller now on the CO2 laser and I want to try and zoom in and see if I can get real close here. The only numbers that we're going to need are the enter button, the escape key, the ZU button, and the arrow keys. So the first thing that we're going to do is press the ZU button to bring up the main menu. And if we just go up three times, we're going to get to the IP config right there. So what I'm going to do is come over here to the orange enter button, press enter, and you'll see this new box appears over here, IP address and gateway. And these are the numbers that you're going to, see, going to need. 
Now, I'm not going to set them in this video. I've just set them a minute ago, but I want to show you how to use this. So when you first log into this IP address, you're going to see that this box over here, this blue box is lit up. That means that that's the box that you're in and you can enter. We're going to use the four arrow keys here. If I move the arrow key to the right, look underneath the six. Do you see that underscore? If I move it to the left, it moves all the way to, to the left. If I move it to the middle, it moves to the middle and then to the right. So back and forth is what you're doing here. If you need to change this number, let's say that it's a zero, there's nothing there, press the down arrow key right here. And that'll take that number out. Or press the up arrow key if it's a different number. See, 200. So that's how you set it. Now, to move to the next box, the white box next to it, we're just gonna press that ZU button again. And we're going to do the same thing here. Move the underscore to wherever, wherever it is you need to change the number and push the number up or down. So if I come over here, I can go 110 if I needed. If I needed 120, I could move to the middle, go to 120. When that's set, I'll press the ZU button and it'll bring us to the next one and I can set that next one. And we keep pressing the ZU button until we're finished. The next thing we'll do after we finish the IP address is press ZU again, and now we'll be in the gateway. And we just fill out the gateway the same exact way. And when you're done, you press the enter button right here. Now, if you don't press the enter button, no changes are gonna be made. So you have to make sure that you press the enter button. We're gonna pretend like I'm pressing it, enter, and then when you're done, press the escape button, and you'll be right back out to the main menu on the Rurita controller. And that is how you set the IP address for the Montport laser or any modern Rurita controller. So if we come over here now, you'll see I'm ready and connected, but not to the 80 watt. I'm connected to the Gerbil device, the 40 watt. So this drop down menu over here will give you a list of all of your lasers. What I want to do is select the Montport 80 watt. And you'll see that I am now connected and ready. If I were to come over here and grab a camera window, pull that out, make it a little bit bigger so that you can see it. Uh, what I'll do is I'll grab the map icon and I'll click somewhere on the work bed so that you can see that we are connected, it is moving, and everything is working as it should. So I will hit the home button now and home it goes <laughs> and now you can see that we are connected and we are ready to work so that's how easy it is to set up your co2 device one of the nicest things about lightburn is that it's so easy to use so there you go it, it's just that simple it really is easy if you know how to do it and uh, i've I'm really, I've just gotten tired of calling people on the phone and walking them through it and remote, uh, doing remote sessions uh, on their computers to get it set up. And, you know, the, the, the answer every time is, wow, I didn't realize it was that easy. It really is very easy. You just have to have a simple understanding of Windows. And I don't have a Mac, so uh, maybe somebody will send me one. <laughs> that I could use to, to do demos with. But I don't have one. I don't want to buy one. Uh, I've never had one, uh, never had a need for it. I do have uh, a Red Hat Linux box in, in, next door, which is very similar to a Mac. So I guess I know how to use it. And I probably could do some demos on that machine. And it would probably be the same as with the Mac. But as far as this is all of my tutorials are windows tutorials with lightburn software so you know there you go but it's just so easy if you click start type cmd which is the shortcut for command prompt and press enter and then all you have to do is put in there ip config space slash all and press enter just that simple look for your ethernet controller and write down that IP address and the gateway as well. The gateway is gonna be the gateway to your router. Uh, and 
it doesn't really matter. Your computer is going to connect to your router's gateway, so they're both going to use the same number. And uh, like I said, uh, just a couple minutes to get this all set up and you don't have to go through the headaches of using a USB connection. Keep in mind that USB connections, first off, they have a service life. They have a plug-unplug life. Uh, and there's only a certain amount of times that you can plug and unplug them be before they become unstable. And most people don't know this. They think that the USB cable is like a wall outlet. You can plug it in forever. It's not true. So the electronics, they wear out inside there. The It gets loose. Um, you know, it doesn't make a right connection, full connection. You bump into it and it moves sideways and can cause all kinds of havoc and they are notorious for dropping packets. So the last thing you want is an expensive piece of oak that you're engraving in your machine or some exotic wood and halfway through the job, the job stops because it stops streaming. Well, that happens with the USB connections and that is the most problematic issue that I've seen with all the people that contact me, probably 100 to 200 emails a day, and I'd say probably 250 contacts a day, I spend half of my day answering emails and messages and things like that. And this is a huge problem in the CO2 world, is not being able to get the jobs done properly. It all leads back to the dropping of the packets. And if you get on a stable Ethernet connection like I have here, that's plugged in once, you know, set it and forget it. And most people are on Wi-Fi today. So, uh, you know, you're already going to have an open Ethernet port on your computer to begin with because likely you're connecting to the Internet by, by Wi-Fi. Um, so at least I know I do and most everybody I know does. So anyway... I just wanted to get that out there and it's getting close it's uh, december 21st i wanted to get this video out before christmas i want to say merry christmas happy holidays uh happy kwanzaa is it happy kwanzaa merry kwanzaa i think they uh on the big continent i think they have a different uh word for happy over there but whatever the kwanzaa is uh <laughs> Uh, happy Passover, whatever it is that you that you celebrate at this time of year. I just want to wish you the, the best and the happiest time of year. And, uh, you know, you should be celebrating life every day of the year like I do now because I have so little of it left. So <laughs> uh, celebrate this time with your, your family, with your friends. Let everybody know how much you love them and care about them. Send everybody a gift or a card or something, a handwritten note, whatever it is that you can afford. Send it out to all of your, your friends and family and loved ones and let them know that uh, you care and that you're thinking about them at this time of year. And hopefully you're thinking about them all year round. But anyway, <laughs> happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Passover, uh, happy Kwanzaa, whatever it is that you're celebrating it. What is the what is the other one uh, from the comedian? I can't remember now. Hmm. Well, nope, it's not coming to me. Somebody's going to put it down in in the comments. What what is? I can't even remember the comedian's name. Uh, the, 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 the tall, skinny Jewish kid. Um, oh boy. Wow. The old brain is going, that's for sure. Anyway, <laughs> Festivus, that's it. Happy Festivus. <laughs> I finally got it. It, you know, the brain's getting old, but it's tired. It's slow, but it catches up after a while. Usually after my videos are, are made and I've made all the mistakes, but anyway. Happy holidays to everybody from the Louisiana Hobby Guy. And I want to tell you that I really appreciate you staying this long. If you've stayed this long, very few of you will. But, you know, my regular supporters will. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And you know that I'm going to see you in the next one.